hi friends uh, welcome back to my channel again so in this video we would be discussing more about user management in salesforce uh, meaning what are profiles what are roles and how we can onboard a user where to check the license what is permission sets what are permission set groups what are permission set license and other important things related to user management in this video so uh, before we start this video uh, you know just uh, you know uh, like the video comment in the video and subscribe and then we we can start so in this video we would be talking in theory first and then i will show you how that can be done in practically then if you have any questions do let me know through the comment sections i will try to answer so basically what is user management we all know that uh, we we all know that basically salesforce is a crm uh, where you know data is stored as an object and object is like a table now uh, let's say this is a salesforce platform uh, you know some objects in the data and it looks like a table and now what happens is if it is a salesforce we need someone who can use salesforce right the user for every saas product for every software we need users to use the product so in the same way salesforce would be having the users so basically salesforce is a tool that mostly sales reps will use i mean not only sales rep especially uh, you know salesforce is like a combination of 18 clouds if i'm not wrong but correct me if i'm wrong through the comment section so we would be discussing more about sales cloud and service cloud mostly and marketing cloud too but uh, depending upon our requirement our understanding we can use it so basically uh, what happens is you are an admin who would be in charge of salesforce and you are the one who would be having access to create a users for sales folks service folks and marketing cloud folks so meaning uh, when you are giving access to sales cloud the access should be different when you are giving access to service cloud the access should be different and for marketing cloud access uh, should be different so based upon the data or object access we need to segregate the users and then we need to onboard them so there are two ways to onboard it one manually two also manually but using a uh, you know csv export sheet and with the third party applications also we can automate onboarding users in the salesforce so basically let's say this is an org what i would be doing is i will show you how we can create a users and how uh, what kind of profile and role we are going to assign them what are the permission sets we are going to give them so i will show them uh, click quickly here and then let's uh, read this part theoretically first so basically what happens is salesforce the leading crm has revolutionized revolution revolutionized the way organization interact with the users customers manage data and make informed decisions a critical component of salesforce effectiveness is user management which involves in setting up and maintaining user accounts you know once you onboard the users it is your responsibility to maintain them like let's say you have the access to uh, reactivate and deactivate the users as well to save a license in that way and uh, we need to check what kind of objects or fields the user is accessing regularly that would be helpful and then just we'll go with theory just remember the keywords here i will show them in practically why we use uh, you know why salesforce user management is important in salesforce one data security so as i said there are like three users service cloud user uh, sales cloud user and marketing cloud user so there are three users but let's say sales cloud user need access to different fields or different objects and in the way in the same way service cloud users need to have access to different objects and different fields and marketing cloud folks need access to different objects and different fields and also it is our responsibility if let's say uh, let's say in sales cloud there is something called opportunity object uh, that 
need not to be visible for service cloud folks because service cloud folks would be focusing more on tickets but accounts would be same for all the three uh, you know all the three clouds so in that way we can define who can view the who, who can view the field who can view the uh, who can read who can write the access i mean write the objects or fields in a specific object in a salesforce app in that way uh, the data security will lie in next customization so the reason why salesforce crm is popular is because of its customization you can customize anything you can create a new app you can create different objects you can create different fields and you can use it as per your requirement it is like a ui you can do anything in this playground i will show you uh, you know when we do a small project that will help you to understand the things more easily and next efficiency so uh, efficiency is something uh, let's say if a sales user is working on something he need not to have access to multiple objects like cases he don't need and uh, what we call let's say we have created a custom object called customer satisfaction this is also sales folks do not use but you have created this object and if you are going to give the view and edit access to this sales folks whenever they launch their sales force when it loads unnecessary data it will take some time to load so if we need to improve the efficiency we need to uh, provide access to the objects and fields which our sales cloud folks need to use in the same way it will apply for service cloud and marketing cloud folks too so in that way you need to define what permission set what kind of access is needed to a specific user and next key key components of salesforce user management so first thing is user accounts so basically user accounts are something uh, you know there can be multiple hundreds of thousands of users for a uh, single organization right so it is our responsibility to create the users and give the necessary access and also uh, you know configure their authentication level and everything will lies under user accounts and next profiles so profiles and roles are you know similar but not same so i will tell you what exactly it is so let's take this is profile a and this is profile b so these two folks are sales folks and for these two of them there is someone called manager and there is someone called regional manager so these two people fall under this manager and this manager will fall under this uh, regional manager in the same way there are profile like profile c and profile d so these two people will fall under one manager m2 let's say this guy is m1 and this is rm2 and this people would be reporting to vp one vp so what happens here is these are called profiles profile 1 profile 2 uh, profile c i mean profile b profile c uh, profile a profile b so all these things are called profiles so these people are defined as uh, they can use it i mean we would be assigning a profile and these two also profiles but here the thing is let's assume these are profiles for uh, i mean roles for now so whatever these two users are using that would be visible to this manager and whatever these two people are accessing this manager can use uh, can see those access so whatever these two people are seeing these two people can see it and whatever these two people are seeing this vp can see it meaning this vp has access to all the fields and object whatever these folks are having access so this pb pcp these are called profiles these are called roles just assume like this but this user also would be having profiles and roles this user is also having profile and roles in that way so the least one the employee is called profile whenever we share the permissions based upon the role it is called role so profile defines a permission what can a salesforce user do and cannot do but roles are something it is a hierarchy based permission access whatever the p1 is having access his manager would be having uh, access to this one 
in the same way it will go on uh, till cu so that is why uh, that is the reason i mean that is the difference between profile and role and one more thing whenever you create a user profiles are mandatory but roles are not mandatory i mean it is optional you can uh, assign a role or you cannot assign a role it is up to you and next permission set so uh, if you remember i have talked about sales uh, users need not to have access to case but for some reason one sales salesforce rep needs to have access to a case but not to his entire team but not to his profile who is having sales rep uh, profile so on that case what he can do is he can create a permission i mean we can create a permission set and assign that permission set to this sales rep when we assign the permission set to this sales rep one what happens is this sales rep uh, can have access i mean whatever the access we give read or write or read and write modify all whatever the access we give then he can see the see those cases this is how it works permission sets general permission sets will extend the permissions for a specific users or groups without changing their profiles so this is how it works and there is one more concept called permission set groups so when i say permission set groups collection of permission sets is called permission groups like let's say if you are giving permission set 1 permission set 2 permission th set 3 to sales reps so he can use this three but let's say all these three permission sets are collectively into one permission set group when you assign this one permission set group to sales representative then he can use it i mean he would be having access to uh, all these three permission sets it is it would be easy concept and it would be recommended if we are assigning uh, you know same permissions every time to same users and one more thing permission sets can uh, have the potential to override owd uh, settings or other permission related settings so that is why permission sets play a key role and next data security so salesforce offers various features like sharing rule criteria based sharing record ownership settings and control data security these settings determine who can access and modify particular records so let's say sales rep 1 is uh, you know sales rep 1 uh, created a deal but he he wants only himself i mean owner himself needs the access to see their own deal so on that case what we will do is we will go to owd and we will make it as private only owners have the potential to see those records but other people won't be having that access and uh, keeping that aside so we need to do regular audit role hierarchy optimization so these are called uh, what what i say these are like never ending processes since you are an admin you have the responsibility to manage your salesforce environment so that is why uh, regular audits should be done how many uh, you know users are onboarding in a month or in a quarter and how many of them are leaving the organization where we are deactivating the profiles and what are the permission sets we have created if we are given some unnecessary permission sets to user we would be removing it because data security is first for us and role hierarchy optimization role hierarchy means you know when we give roles basically gives the access uh, permissions in a way of hierarchy management so this is how it works and training and onboarding so let's say if we hire a new sales rep so it is recommended that we provide training from our end or else the team would be giving that that is what it simply defines and data ownership so let's say if a sales cloud folks are using some highly confidential data which is not uh, you know which is not needed to seen by other folks in any company i mean uh, in any of them in, in the same company so at that time we will create some sharing rules business rules and in that way we can uh, you know avoid some conflicts and data backup so basically data backup is something uh, you know it is highly recommended because we never know when uh uh you know when some uh, let's say if someone who has uh, not having any knowledge on salesforce if he is going to delete some data we will run into issues 
so it is recommended to have the data backup plan so now let's jump into the practical here so just go to your hands and org i just you know rename this to user management for our quick understanding purpose i have opened it so you know this is the salesforce environment that we were able to see now let's see how we can onboard a user here just click on setup just go here so this is something uh, we all need to know like we have talked about permission sets group collection of permission sets is called permission sets group you can uh, define that and profile sets are something which gives some expanded access for a profile i mean for an object or fields or uh, you know reports and dashboards whatever uh, we need and profiles are something it will define what a user can see and what a user cannot see and public groups this is something i have not covered but i will cover in going forward and queues so let's say you are using the service cloud so when some user is filing a ticket then it will come to a queue from there uh, you know from their uh, service cloud folks uh, can see the you know tickets and assign themselves and so serve you and let's say roles roles provide you know access in a way like hierarchy based access so when creating a user uh, roles are roles you know uh, choosing roles is optional but choosing profile is mandatory and next user management settings this is a big concept we will cover it in later and next users so basically this is the place where we create the users now let's see let me click on let me make a duplicate i will tell you why so i just need to click on users i have clicked on it and if you see these are the uh, four users that are available in our uh, you know in our instance or in our environment so let's say if you want to create a user you can click the user and you can do it and let's say if a user is stating that he is unable to access the sales so just come here check whether the account is active or not from here if the account is active just click on reset password an email would be sent uh to the user on how to reset password uh you know password resetting password instructions and uh, lots of organizations now are using saml based authentication so i think they will log in through any of the octa dashboard or whatever uh, their company has been provided to them and the reason why i have opened this one is there is something called company information so it is always a good practice uh you know before you give access to a user just make sure you know everything what's happening in the company and how many license we are left with so this is entirely uh, you know company information related things how many licenses are there like how many salesforce licenses are there how many charter free licenses are there all these things in the same way uh, there are like permission set licenses so permission set permission set group are different and permission set license is different so let's say when you are going to you know add a package which is paid one so it will create permission sets and permission set licenses if it is paid then on that case we need to add permission set license and these are not that important but if you need you can you know uh, read more and then let's create a new user we have a user called sales i mean we have one license left so i can create a salesforce user here with salesforce license so viewer career so email so here is the catch you can create n number of accounts with same email address n number of accounts with same email address but uh, you know username should be unique username unique and email address can be uh, you know multiple multiple uh, you know multiple people can use same email address like email is 
one to many relationship email same username 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 this is how it runs and sml is authenticated with username but not email address in in salesforce and then keeping that aside uh let me let me let me show so let me make it as surya wpg g15 at gmail.com would be my email address and username came like this but since we already created a user with this username let's see uh, how it goes and title would be like manager for now you can add anything here here the user license interesting part comes in so these are the licenses available for us this chatter fee we have lots of licenses but others are we need to see before we uh, you know before we onboard a user so we have one license left with salesforce just click on salesforce and then uh system administrator to and role is here uh let me mark it as ceo okay so this is how it goes and english and you can add a manager so for octa based or sml based just uncheck this but if you are logging in with the username and password you need to have this just click on it and click on save so we have created uh we have created a user with this username but let me see why how i was able to create it because it should not allow me to create it should not allow where you are running into issues so i clicked on users career viewer we have given this okay if you see this this was the username uh, we have used in the past but the username is different now that is how we were able to create an account so let me click on users so if you see here are the permission set assignments how we can use it i have clicked on here permission sets so there are these many permission sets available right now so let me click on so this is how you can add the permission sets and let's see if there are any permission set groups are there permission set groups let's see just try to play around with this there are no permission sets available so we'll ignore this and uh, permission set license assignments so we have assigned two licenses for this but all these are the permission set licenses you can assign anything like here like this just save we uh, can be assigned permission set because we are carry user license doesn't so. so if we are running into issues it won't allow us to do this uh, we need to remove them api because integration api license only we can use it so permission set completed permission set group we don't have any values permission set license i have shown you and these are the other things that we would be covering uh, in, in our future videos it is not important as of now and next what we would be doing here is we would be logging in so when when i clicked on generate a new password we would be receiving an email so let me click on here so your developer edition is done let me click on this one and reset password let me set up some password for this so uh, one thing here so let's say so let's say uh, you know so let's say if you want to launch an organization without the help of hands on org now you can directly log in in this way just go to login.fax uh, uh, i mean 
salesforce.com and then enter your username and password it will uh, push you here so this is basically what it is how we can create a users where we can see the licenses if you see i have given a license to this guy uh, i mean i have used this license just let me refresh then let's see what we were able to see now so we have consumed two licenses here so we won't be having any remaining license but we can create chatter free licenses based upon uh, you know the requirement so this is the user management friends and how to assign a permission set permission set rules over here and uh, what we left with okay so this is how you can create a user as in a profile and role so what i recommend is just you also uh, you know go to your hands on org and open a playground and try to create two to three profiles you can uh, run with you know you can go with multiple different user licenses and it will give you a good practice this is what i can say for now and uh, that's it for this video friends in my upcoming video i would be you know creating more videos related to salesforce until then uh, keep watching my videos and i would be adding this link uh, in the description so you can take a look and understand the concepts thank you and have a great day Take care. Bye-bye.